Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. On this episode of Pinchy Al's Garage, we're pulling the wire harness out of the Corrado, getting rid of the ABS system, and we're going to get ready to start shaving the bay. So as always, we're going to break it, fix it, and repeat, because this is Pinchy Al's Garage. thing we need to get rid of is this uh, coolant ball. Uh, we're never going to use a coolant ball in this car so this is coming out permanently. A lot of the bolts we're never going to reuse. Now if you guys are trying to restore your Corrado back to its original state and blah 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 then keep the hardware. But we're not keeping it. This is just trash. We'll give ourselves a little trash bin here on the side, that way I can just dump everything. So that exposes more of the wiring here into the chassis. So what we're going to end up doing is feeding the uh, wiring back into the car and then pulling everything out um, out of the fuse block. Uh, we will have to mark everything uh, before we do it, take pictures of everything because there's a lot of wiring in this car that um, a lot of it we're not even going to use. A lot of it has to be reused. So we have to get find out what's what before we get to that point. Uh, here is the brake booster. Here we go. Well, this is kind of a hodgepodge setup. So this is the brake fluid, ABS module, which is gigantic. Uh, the brake booster sits like somewhere back here. It is weird. Uh, these Corrados are very interesting. Um, machines. She's inside, Papa. So the next thing is we got to figure out how to drain all this fluid. Uh, without making a mess. Uh, it looks like I probably just drained it all from the clutch master here, maybe? No. That won't work. It's only a little bit of fluid. Hmm. Because if I pop this out, it's just going to make a mess. Which I might end up just doing. Because we're going to be using a Mark II brake system on this car. So we're going to convert this to manual brake and manual power steering. I mean manual steering. We're not going to be doing a power steering system on this. That way I don't have to worry about a lot of wiring in this car. <coughs> Such a big hodgepodge now. This stuff. Hmm. So I see the clutch master here, which goes down to here, which it has the slave on that one. But I don't see a brake system on this car. More than likely, it's part of this right here. Some weird electronic brake. But the good thing is that this is a Mark II chassis, so you can use Mark II components or Mark III components, which isn't a big deal. Get a couple rags. Like I said, I'm not going to salvage any of this stuff, so... Destroying it and breaking it is not a big concern of mine. Or preserving it, like what someone say would say. That's one way to get rid of it. Okay, so now we got to get rid of this assembly right here. So, 
I see an Allen here, an Allen there, an Allen right here as well. Uh, we're going to have to take, get rid of all these brake lines as well. So, we're going to get rid of the line, break, uh, well, break loose all the brake lines that are not kind of like attached to this system. So like this one. So what's going to end up happening is that a lot of these brake lines will not line up anymore with the new uh, brake system we're going to install. So what's going to happen is that we're going to have to make new brake lines, which isn't difficult. It's just trying to find brake lines that are already pre-made for this car is the difficult part, which I already did find, uh, which is not actually really cheap. 40, 40 bucks to get a full new brake line system in this car. And I'll show you guys how when we get to that point later in the, the build process. For now, just, just remember we're just doing these right here. This is the thing I hate about brake lines. They're not like easy to move out of the way or get out of the way. That's one. We need to get rid of this one too. You're gonna end up stripping some, so be ready for that. If you do, make sure you got vice grips. The vice grips are gonna be your friend. I'm showing you like this one right here you're never going to reuse so it's be something that you have to worry about or miss when you get rid of it um, yeah this is a pain in the rear all right I'll get back to it in a little bit so I used the vice grip on this one got it off immediately this one you just need to use another wrench to break it loose so you have the uh, hold the tension on the one side because if not it just spins and it just cause more damage. I don't know what what I have to preserve and what I have to remove so I'm taking my time because I don't know what I, I can reuse in this whole process so I'm doing the best I can without creating as much damage as possible. Um, and that being said I mean that's just one thing you want to try to do every time you You do something like this especially when you're doing a full rebuild on a car you'll never know what you're going to keep and what you're going to get rid of so it's one thing it's just to keep keep a good rule of thumb and trying to preserve as much as you can I have to remove this line to get to the other line out of the way so that should give us access to these three bolts that we need to get to 
and break loose. So one, two, three, and that should uh, that should pull this whole assembly out. Which my guess this is the ABS assembly. This is like your clutch master. Um, I don't, these are weird pumps, so it's this is old school '90s stuff, man. I don't even know what most of this stuff does anymore. So let's find out what socket this one uses. All right, so this looks like it uses a six Allen wrench. Now, one thing I like to do if they're not going off as easy. I use my homemade Allen wrench breaker bar. Extension and a deep socket. Whammo. Life is easy. I love these AutoZone Allen wrenches. They have these rounded uh, heads on here, so you don't have to actually go straight on there to get a good uh, grip on them, and it lets you go in at an angle and actually unbolt stuff. Freaking love them. Paid like 15 bucks for this Allen wrench set, and it's been a lifesaver. That's going to leak brake fluid right now. So, I got a couple things in the way. Just gotta figure out what goes where. What's keeping me from getting this out? Oh, just a wire. That's it. There we go. That was easy. Now, what you see here. Is another brake system, which is pretty neat, pretty dope. Um, get the plunger. There's like another plunger on top, but I think it's hydraulic based. I don't know. I could be very wrong, but from what I'm looking at, it looks, looks that's what it looks like to me. Um, so these come out through the back. They're bolted through the the reverse uh, installed. Um, so what you have to do to get this whole assembly out is take out the four bolts underneath the dash and this will let you pull this whole assembly out to get that done and which we're going to have to do um, because we're getting a new brake system so we cannot use this assembly um, we're going to have to hunt down a mark three with a bracket and everything so we can mount that uh, brake setup
looks like the clutch slave cylinder right here. Or actually, no, this is the master. This is the slave. Uh, well, this one looks pretty easy. Just two 10 millimeter bolts, and that comes right out. It's a plunger base, so it's nothing crazy. And then it grabs the fluid from right from the reservoir. So we'll be able to make a new system for that really, really simple and quick. This is the one that's going to be difficult because we're going to have to figure out what, what brackets we're going to need exactly to make this work. But it shouldn't be that hard. Um, the next thing we're going to have to do while we're out here on this side of the car is we have to get the little 10, 10 or 12 millimeter socket inside here so we can take off the locking mechanism that holds the uh, rack in place up here so we can drop the whole subframe as one piece and that way I can just clean everything up a lot nicer and then that way once the wiring comes out and this comes out we can start shaving the engine bay which will come out really really nice once we're done so let's get inside the engine uh, get inside and then we'll get with that and then we'll finish the rest of the outside now we're going into the interior of the Corrado we get you some light in here. Now if you look at this, this is the brake. If you look right up towards the back, you should count one, two all the way up top, and three bolts. Um, they're pretty much in a kind of a triangle pattern. Uh, those are the three that hold the whole brake reservoir and all that stuff that's over there. You need to pull those three off and then the rest of it comes right off. Alright, so once you get those three bolts off, the next step is getting this guy off right here uh, pretty much you're going to need a flathead and kind of bend it a little bit and it should slide right out uh, this whole thing is locked together by this little one little piece of metal right here so you got to pull this clip out so that slides out and then you can pop out the rest of the bracket pop right out just like that and then that whole assembly now you can go out into the real world and go back around so we took the three bolts off so it should be one two three and then you gotta take these two off right there one two so one two three two three four or five sorry about the blood if you guys don't like blood and then all of this should pop this whole assembly should pop right off uh, the clutch has the same exact uh, clip as the brake so make sure you pull that out as well put that aside because you're gonna need to buy new ones and match everything up with all your new product so I always try not to throw that stuff away and now for this stuff to come out be nothing else holding this bad boy in play. Ah, there's one more bolt. Right here. Right above the clutches. Another 13 millimeter. Man. Alright. So everything's now removed. You guys can see. We might have to reuse this bracket. But we're going to be using a different type of brake system. So something you're going to have to put aside and worry about later. Or maybe let it drain somewhere. And then worry about it later. So now that you have all that removed, next is now the wiring harness. So for wiring on this thing, it's going to be kind of tricky. Um, you want to pull out the non-wire stuff first. So like your speedometer cable can be put out of the way. Your 
throttle cable can be pushed out of the way. Just like that. So all you see is just wiring. So um, we got one, two, three, four, five, six big old grommet holes that where wiring has to be pushed into. Uh, you can definitely try to pull it out. I think it'd be easier to push it back in and then go from there. On my Mark II, what I ended up doing was pushing the wiring in. It was actually easier for me. So I'm going to try to do the same for the Corrado. separate all the wiring that we need to push through first. So that way you can feed in what you only need to feed and get rid of what you don't need to feed right through. try to do is feed in one loom and then you pull it in, pull that one out. You can't feed the whole thing at once because once you get to the actual like butt connectors and stuff, the hole's gonna get tighter. So you gotta have to go in, find out where that hole is, pull the loom slowly, and then when you can get to one of these, then feed that one out in first and then go to the next one, the next one until that's out, and then repeat the process for the rest of the harness. So we pulled the first harness in. I wanted to verify that my my uh, my idea worked and it worked flawlessly. So now we're going to repeat the process. Now I'm going to film it so you guys can see it. Um, this one's going to be a little bit tougher and a lot more to push through, uh, but it should work on the same method. So just remember everything that has to go with it. If there's things that loop to another harness you're, you're kind of effed but I don't think there's anything in here that does that Things you're going to have to disconnect due to the fact that they just they're attached to other parts of the harness um, so it will kind of be difficult but a lot of this stuff like I said we're gonna to have to make our new harness custom so when we get to that point in the DIY we'll show you guys what to do
This one's a little tough. Much tighter fit than all the other ones. We need a flat head to push that wiring all together. So yeah, I used a flat head screwdriver to feed in that one. Again, and then push it in. And then once you got enough in there, you have to pull one through first, and then the other one after. Let's see here. getting caught now. What's going on here? Face this one, pull this one back in, pull it in, and then finish the rest of it off. Go back. Be careful, Alonzo. You okay? Yeah. Right. Oh man. Yeah, that happens. So, like right here, got a ground cable that we're not going to want to run through. It's just a ground strap. So. cable you don't need to run through. It'll get stuck. And then let's see here. It's getting stuck. There's a lot of stuff trying to get out through this one little hole. Oh, 
All right, now we have all the extra space for the rest of the wiring. Which will fit right through this bad big old hole. No issues. Get that going. Stuck again. Why are we stuck this time? Your shoe. All right, that should feed all the way through now. of it out and then it's time to start shaving the bag this big piece of loom right here pushing the loom that way it gives me somewhere to grab on and then I can start pulling one wire at a time out so you guys a little bit closer view Yeah. 
clip. Where's clip number? Come on, go in there. Number two. through until this piece is through. Ah! Alright, that's almost it. This one doesn't fit. It's kind of weird. There we go. Everything eventually fits. Uh, we're down to these last couple wires here. These might, we might have to cut the grommet and probably feed them in with the other ones along the way. Um, once we figure out the wiring on this car, we can weld in these holes and just use one big hole for the whole entire loom. And that way we just have a lot less wiring. We haven't, I don't know where we're going to get to that point, but we'll get there. So what I ended up doing was cutting the grommets just slightly. You can get new grommets, they're not expensive, and they're pretty universal in size. Since we're not going to be using ABS, this is an ABS sensor. Um, So there's no ABS in this car anymore, so it's good to just pull it out. Uh, we're not going to be using ABS. Why? Because race car. And to keep your cost down and keeping your issues down, get rid of ABS. Now some people, I agree, it is better to have an ABS brake system in your car. Um, for daily driving um, I don't know I, I've never cared for it my 
all my cars they've always been broken I just put good brakes on them I try not to cheap out on the brakes uh, like pads and rotors and stuff so so you'll notice all the harness is now gone now you have all these little random pieces of, uh, of rubber here um, just start getting into the habit just pushing stuff in now to prevent water from going into your car as you're cleaning and degreasing and doing all this um, as you can see I mean we're gonna have a, we have a lot of cleaning to do there's years of grime in this thing that we're gonna have to get rid of so what I would do is probably um, get some tape uh, some good duct tape and tape it from the back as much as you can Maybe put some little rubber um, stoppers in here or earplugs, big pieces of tape. That way you don't get water as much, or you get water in here, but just don't get gallons of water put in the car. Uh, your next process is going to be cleaning your bay. And the next step also for me will be dropping the subframe and getting rid of all this extra little plastic stuff. Uh, the battery will be ran in the back so we got a lot to do a lot a lot to do so that everybody is how do you remove a Corrado brake system stuff I don't know what you want to call it but the whole assembly pull the harness out all at once all right Thanks for watching this episode of Pinchao's Garage. Next uh, episode, we're going to be finishing up cleaning, degreasing, sanding, and then get ready to shave the bay and rebuild the whole lower suspension and uh, drivetrain pretty much underneath. Fix all that. And then we're upgrading to sway, uh, KW sway bars. We're upgrading to SolarWorks uh, coilovers. Big, big brakes on this guy. I mean, there's a whole thing. So... Whoever gets this car when it's done built and wins this car is going to be a very, very happy camper because we're going to make this all brand new pretty much for them. <laughs> Alright, peace out guys. Talk to you later.